Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I do have at least one question I'd like to get to, but first thing I want to do is associate myself with uh, Senator Booker's uh, comments, line of questioning on the uh, equity, racial and otherwise, uh, element of this uh, important conversation. Uh, and second, uh, Mr. Chairman, I uh, can't help uh, but um, feel the need to respond to some of the comments I heard earlier from Republican members of this committee. Uh, so let me clarify that, first of all, Democrats are not trying to deflect here. We're not trying to mislead here. We're trying to stand up for what's right and what stood as a right for half a century in the United States of America. And we're not afraid of democracy. You want to hear who's afraid of democracy? Those who uh, were uh, more than just disappointed by outcomes of elections in a number of states, folks, this question has been on the ballot since the Dobbs decision. Questions put before voters whether or not to make access to reproductive health care more restricted or to strengthen access. And in state after state, the public has sided with more access. Not just in the state of California, which is considered, oh, it's a deep blue state. I'm talking states like uh, Virginia and Michigan, very purple states by some, some people's measure, but also states like Missouri, Ohio, Kentucky. So no, we're not afraid of democracy, but we do believe that there are some issues that rise to the level that warrant national, federal protections. It would be wrong to suggest that there shouldn't be any for the whole country and just let each state do what they want. Now, I do believe there are some of our colleagues who would like to leave the question of things like marriage equality to the states, and we shouldn't have federal protections. We should, and we do. I'm sure there's some of my colleagues who would rather return the question of interracial marriage to the states, and that we shouldn't have federal protections. We should, and we do. So I'm sure there's some of my colleagues who think there shouldn't be federal protections for our fundamental right to vote. We should. And we kind of do. That's some unfinished business. But that may be a topic for a hearing on another day. And the question of Alabama. No, we're, way, the way we have portrayed the decision by the Alabama Supreme Court relative to IVF is actually right on point. It's why former President Trump has tried so quickly to distance himself from that decision. And what people call, Republicans called on the Alabama legislature to respond to it. When my colleague on this committee says, well, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, but it should be fixed and it will be fixed. You can't have it both ways. It was right or it's wrong. Clearly, the Alabama Supreme Court got it wrong and the Alabama legislature was put in the position of having to rectify. Now to today's hearing. Since the decision by the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade, thousands of women have been forced to travel outside of their home state, sometimes hundreds of miles, to access the reproductive health care that they need. California is among several states that has seen a significant rise in out-of-state women seeking essential care. And it's more critical now than ever that all women are able to freely travel to access the reproductive health care that they need. It's equally important to ensure that states like California also are supported with the adequate resources to provide women with that quality care, regardless of where they come from. Ms. Rivera, we keep turning to you <laughs> for your uh, tremendous perspective and expertise here. How has the influx of out-of-state women seeking care uh, impacted health care systems in states like California, where abortion remains legal. Thank you for your question, Senator. Um, so states like California, um, a number of states have really stepped up and expanded access to abortion care because of the anticipation that more people will need it, um, which is great. Um, on the other hand, it's strained those um, systems in the state. Um, so people inside those states have longer waiting periods, for example, um, because it's harder to get an appointment because of the influx of people from other states. 
So on one hand, it is great that states like California are able to serve people coming from out of states. And at the same time, it's, it really is taxing um, the health system in, in your state. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair.